There was plenty of evidence to show who did this, but would they ever be found guilty? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Jill and Julie Hansen. Viewer discretion is advised. This case happened in Willow Creek, California. I guess they're known for Bigfoot? I had no idea. Hans and Betty Hansen here were parents to four children, Donnie and Becky, and then twins, Jill and Julie. Donnie and Becky were actually children from Betty's previous relationship. So Jill and Julie were the only two children that were Hans's kids. Jill and Julie grew up as basically the best of friends. They were really close. They were always known for their very upbeat attitude, always smiling, always happy, always playing. The two of them were just always seen doing everything together. Both such very lively spirits, and it was just, it was impossible to separate the two of them. But unfortunately, tragedy would befall them one night in 1987. The family lived in a trailer in Willow Creek, California. Right next to the trailer was a warehouse that was run by Betty and Hans. This was like a supply business warehouse, so they would, you know, sell supplies to people. At this point, Julie and Jill still live at the house. Donnie, who's now 21, does not live there, neither does Becky. However, on the night of November 14th, 1986, Donnie was staying at the trailer and he was sleeping on the couch. This is a recreation, of course, from Unsolved Mysteries. At three o'clock in the morning, Betty would wake up because she smelled smoke. She woke hands up and hands got up, opened their door and saw a huge fire down the hallway of their home. Again, TikTok recreation from Unsolved Mysteries, not real. So Hans gets a fire extinguisher that they have in the house and he's trying to put the flames out, but he's having no luck. As Betty and Hans are trying to find their way out of the house, the Betty says she hears Donnie screaming at someone to get out, get out of here, go away. While Betty is screaming for Julie and Jill, it's, it's pure chaos. Betty and Donnie and Hans manage to get out of the house. They go to their warehouse right next to the home. They get more fire extinguishers because they sell them there. And they rush back to the house to try to put out the flames. They have no luck. The fire is massive. Hans grabs a stepladder and he smashes the bedroom window of Julie and Jill because they slept in the same room. And then he started to spray the hose in there. But again, it just, the fire would just not go down. He's screaming for Julie and Jill. He asks Donnie, have you seen Julie or Jill come out of the house? Have you seen them anywhere? And Donnie says, no, I have not. Finally, the firefighters arrive and they're able to, over the course of a couple of hours, get the fire out. The fire completely consumed the home and it was burnt to nothing but ash. They couldn't search the home that night though because the flames were still smoldering and it was just impossible to go in there. As the fire is being extinguished though, neighbor finds Julie outside. And then this is where it gets very strange because Julie had no signs of fire damage anywhere on her. She was bleeding profusely from her stomach. This is when Donnie claims he found Julie and brought her outside despite telling his mom and dad prior that he had not seen Jill or Julie at all. It was actually the neighbors who found her, not Donnie, but Donnie took credit for it. Julie is rushed to the hospital. The following morning, they're finally able to enter the remains of the home and they find a body, soon to be identified as the body of Jill Hansen. It wasn't the fire that killed her, it was a gunshot wound. When Julie finally got to the hospital, they also discovered that she too had a gunshot wound to her abdomen. No fire damage at all. According to her doctor, she said that she had no idea who did this. She didn't see who did it. As they found the body in the house, they're also investigating the warehouse. And while they're there, they find a shotgun. It was determined that both girls were shot with a 12 gauge shotgun. They find spent casings, they find shells, which are all identified as the exact same ammunition that shot both girls. It was this gun. The house was under basically police watch for several days. About two days after the incident, police caught someone trying to break into the warehouse. Turns out that person was Donnie. He did not know that they had found the shotgun yet because they hadn't told anyone. So when confronted, he said, well, he was just there for the family dog, but he already knew the family dog was with a neighbor. Also at the house and in the house, they found the burnt remains of several gas cans. It was determined to be gasoline that started the fire. This was definitely an arson. Well, here's the thing. Donnie, just the night prior to this, purchased five gallons of gasoline. When interviewed, the gas station attendant said that it was Donnie and he had filled up five canisters, identical canisters that were found at the house. What about the gun? Well, according to one of Donnie's friends, he borrowed the gun from that friend, Donnie did. 
Then they found credit card purchases where Donnie had purchased the exact same ammunition, same type of ammunition, used in the gun to shoot both girls, while his credit card was used to purchase those ammunition. So it's signed, sealed, delivered at this point, right? I mean, it's the exact same gun. The gun confirms to have been borrowed by Donnie. He bought the ammunition, so he's arrested, even though he denies having any responsibility. Sadly, at the hospital, Julie Hansen, who was recovering, she suddenly died because an air bubble had been put into one of her IVs. It entered her bloodstream and it killed her. The hospital would eventually go on a wrongful death trial and they were found not responsible. And a lot of people believe that this was no accident. Could the killer of Jill have come back to do this to Julie? It is possible. So now Donnie is charged with the murders of both of his half-sisters. His trial would be a joke. His defense came up with an absolutely preposterous story. The defense stated that two completely unknown individuals just happened across the Hanson home. They just so happened to find the gun that Donnie had borrowed. They just so happened to find the ammunition that Donnie had purchased. They just so happened to find the five gallons of gas that Donnie had purchased. These two unknown men, for whatever reason, then just walks into the house with all of these items that they found there and just poured gasoline all over the house and lit the house on fire. According to Donnie Hansen, who would only be interviewed like this, You know, when you're talking like this, I witnessed a murder, but I don't want to be seen on the <laughs> Well, he says he got up from the couch when he saw a man pointing a shotgun at one of his sisters in the hallway. He saw this person shoot his sister. He then says he rushes to her, picks her up, and then runs her out of the house. But for some reason, the guy with the gun who's seeing him do all of this, saving his sister, doesn't shoot him at all. Despite the fact that Donnie literally laid eyes on him, according to him. Weird. And why not tell your dad that you had already rushed Julie out of the house? Why pretend like you had not seen her yet? Honestly, I'll believe in Bigfoot before I believe that ridiculous story the defense tried to give. But the defense had a couple of witnesses, neighbors, who said they think they saw two silhouettes of men near the Hanson home around the time of the incident. And that just gave life to the defense's story. But who were these men? What was their motive? Why the hell and how the hell did they know about the gun, the ammunition, the gas cans? And then why do this? Why? The only one with motive was Donnie. Financial motive in terms of life insurance policy, he likely expected everyone to die that night. The one night he's there visiting his family. Within 24 hours of purchasing five gallons of gas, ammunition for a shotgun he just borrowed. Clearly, he's guilty. But the jury says he's not. I shit you not. They believed the story the defense gave. They said the evidence about all of the purchases and all that just wasn't good enough. But this hypothetical crazy story was good enough. This jury uh, it might just be as bad as OJ's jury or Casey Anthony's jury. Stupidest people I've ever seen in my life. So Donnie, whose photo I cannot find anywhere, I only have a sliver of his head, even Unsolved Mysteries did not have a photo of him, he got off scot-free. Hans and his biological mother, Betty, they completely severed ties with him after all of this. And they've never spoke to him again. Money cannot be recharged because double jeopardy. I don't have a phone number to give you to provide information because police consider this case is closed. Donnie Hansen was obviously the murder of Jill and Julie Hansen. There is no one else to arrest or charge. And he gets to live a free man. They do not get the same.